Good morning. Hey. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good, good morning. Good hey. morning. I think we're live, Ron. Right now? Yeah, right now. <laughs> as as we speak, we are live. Gonna see if uh let's see. You got some drawings you're doing today, I heard. Drawings. I do have some drawings to do today. What you got there? A, uh, uh, a craven. You craving some craven? No. <laughs> you make an exception this time, though. Yes. Let's see. I'm going to go over and monitor the exception this time, though. See, I got to mute that. Got to, got to. Hey, Adam. Good morning to you, sir. How are you today? Going to see if we got any any late lilies or whatever you want to call them. <laughs> late, late lilies. That didn't sound right. They're going to take offense to that. I know it. If you know anyone named Lily, send her my way. All right. So someone's at your door. I know it, it does. It's a fresh needed rubber eraser. Glad you're using fresh rubbers. Yes. My my old one was too sticky. It was sticking to my fingers, so I had to uh, had to finally throw it. Now I'm just. I actually, as Ron can attest. I was sketching these early this morning so I could ink them and try to get them completed in our allotted time frame till Ron has to 2 a 2 a.m. <laughs> Ron has the 2 a.m. <laughs> wow. That would, well, I can't say I haven't done it before because mm -hmm. I've done some long streams, but I don't, I don't think 2 a.m. is in my future today. No, we haven't gone past midnight. No, but I mean, in the past, I have. Yeah, yeah. We uh, there used to be, and I never tried it, but there would be like a twenty-four hour like draw thing where there'd be head sketches for twenty-four hours. And I saw one guy stick it out, and I thought he was gonna like get sick during the last, like the last five hours. He was. Taking a lot of breaks. Let me say that. Well, that see that shows you that this tape is not that tacky. All right. So, but that needed eraser might just. I see it moving. I'm going to open a fresh Kurataki here. At least I think I am. There we go. All right. It's like a magic wand. A little magic wand. Although this cap is bigger than this one because this one has the bigger end. Did you follow that, Mr. Ron? I followed. That's how you know. See? Bigger cap. Bigger brush point. Bigger lines. When I need them. Smaller cap smaller brush see i thought for sure under the smaller cap would be the bigger brush <laughs> <laughs> you thought i was gonna switch it on you and you were gonna go wait he just pulled it out of the bag how did he do that how did he do that i do have me tricks because tricks aren't always for kids so Get started so that we can get finished, hopefully. Get your Craven 316 out of the way. Yes, that's exactly right. So 
So what else are you drawing today? Uh, we are doing a hobgoblin for you, of course. A tiger shark for uh, Nate. Those are both going to be profiles. And we're going to be doing a Bane. Now, which type of Bane? A movie that, Bane or a comic? No, comic, comic, comic. I don't really care for the movie look Bane, the Tom Hardy deal. Do you? No. I mean, I never saw the movie. I've just seen stills from it. and I don't know. I mean, I the like movie the, great. Huh? I mean, the movie was great, but I mean, it, and and I get they were trying to make it like very realistic, so I get the costume. Yeah, I, I um, get that too. But I, I did like the uh, the comic version, the Luchador. As I like to call it. There's Shannon. Good morning, Shannon. Shannon, did you did you get the refund? Is that all straightened out now? I hope so. I didn't know what was going on either, so I figured I would hear from you, so. I'm doing good, Adam. He asks, how's everyone today, John? It's good to hear you. So far, so good. Let you know in about five hours. <laughs> no, I don't think we'll be going that long. But... Yardbird won't allow it. <laughs> That's true. Well, they will allow it. It just stops recording after four hours. The yard bird. I like that. Uh, I don't know where they got that name, but it just seems like it could be something else. Well, Shannon said that, uh, yes, he's unsure why PayPal sent the money twice. I don't know either, but I'm glad that it's, uh, that it's fixed. It's quiet. Too quiet. Wyatt. That's the name of that kid. Now that's funny. By me saying quiet, too quiet. Made me remember Wyatt from Ozark's name. Which, by the way, is a nice series that my friend Ron recommended I watch when I asked him what he was watching and what he had watched and Because I don't watch much. So when I do, I, I want something good. Got no interest in that Tiger King thing. For a minute there, I thought I said Tiger King, Ron. Uh-oh. Ron maybe had a call. Open my. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. What'd you do? I had to restart my uh, my setup here. Oh, okay. So, did you even finish uh, Daredevil yet? The series? Yeah. No, nope, never watched season three of Daredevil or season two of The Punisher. 
because I hate being left in limbo. Well, Adam says the time lapse video was cool, good content to get out there. He really enjoyed it. Yeah, I'm actually. Um, I downloaded these little head sketches, Adam, the ones that I did uh, that the streams are around four hours and I'm going to cut those up into individual. So each one will have their own little time lapse. So if you just want to watch uh, your character or a certain character, and they should probably only be about two to three minutes maybe, but that's something that's something I'd been wanting to do for a while. And uh, I finally sat down and got a little tutorial on Adobe Rush. Even though I have Premiere, that's a little bit too much that I don't think I need right now. But it still took me three and a half hours to walk through and do everything. And so I'm glad that you liked it because I did invest some time uh, into it. And it's been performing well, and I have picked up uh, how many new subscribers did I say, Ron? Since you put that one out, probably almost 15. 15, 16, something like that, yeah. Yeah. Well, Coffee Breath is here, and he says hello. Hey, Coffee Breath. Did we ever establish his, if Coffee Breath was a he or she? Don't know. Well, just because you referred to he's here, so I, I don't know. I don't want to. I don't remember saying he, but. <clears throat> Do what, Jared? Pardon? <laughs> I thought you said you don't remember saying he. Correct. You'll have to watch the tape again. That's why I said Jared. Ah, uh, gotcha. Because he didn't remember. Until there was proof on the table. Well, Coffee Breath says, I am a he, all man, baby. All man, baby? <laughs> I, I'm sure he meant that there was a, uh, a comma that, right. he no, I got that I did not read. Right. No. I, I... <laughs> let, let, me, let me read it the way he, he wrote it. All man, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Adam said, uh, Ozark is great. Adam, yeah, did you finish it. I am in season two. Ron, you finished it, right? Yes, I did. And, and what are you on to now, sir? Not sure. I was thinking about watching a show someone told me about called Dark, I think, on Netflix. It was a little slow on season or episode one last night, so I ended up coming off of it. I might go back to it, maybe. How about Too Hot to Handle? I, I have no idea what that is. I think it's like a uh, uh, a show like The Bachelor, but the girls are like super hot. And they're parading around in next to nothing. Don't let that influence you, but <laughs> I know you're a Bachelor fan, so. Well, Adam said he also finished it. Season three was great right up to the end. Uh, spoiler free. It's not going to ruin it for anybody. That's good. Not that I really care, but. Shannon said Ozark is great, but reminds him of many friends. 
<laughs> I think we can all uh, appreciate that. Now, um, Jay Wilson's here, and he wants to know what type of pen are you using? It's a Kurataki uh, brush marker, a dual tip. Another You'll see Neil one. Adams using this. It's a it's a blue one because it's only got the fine tip on it, and I'm the one that uh, that showed it to Neil at a convention. I saw Neil uh, using some other pen where the tips aren't as good, and I use them too. They're the pit pens. They're a little bit softer and they they um, dull down quite a bit easier. And I I had one and I had a new one and I had one I was using and I went over and I said, Hey Neil, try this. And he was like, Oh, that's pretty nice. What is it? And I said, it's Kurataki. And I said, here, let me give you one. He goes, where do you get these? And I told him jet pens. And next thing I know, Neil's always got one in his pocket. You ask him on his uh, Facebook page, he'll tell you, Sean Beatty. I found out about these from Dave Johnson. Well, Adam says his fiance is watching too hot. And what is her take on that, Adam? If you can enlighten us. Or she can enlighten us. Or somebody enlighten us. Because I could be totally wrong. Well, Jay Wilson said, that's cool to know. Thanks, John. You're welcome, Jay. So Coffee's Breath says, for fans of crass cartoons, F is for family is funny. It's basically about Bill Bird's childhood. Bill Bird, Bill Bird, Bill Bird. Why does that name ring a bell, but I can't place it? Burr, B-U-R-R-S, Bill Burr's. Okay. And Ken Carson's here. He says, hello. Good morning, Ken. Now, have you ever read any of the Raven <clears throat> storylines? No. I actually did buy on Comixology the uh, six-part Craven trade. They had it on. I think I got it for like four ninety-nine, which 
was a you know probably a steal because you can't even buy the the paper the trade paperback for that. And I decided one day I'm going to read it. That along with Secret Wars. <laughs> you still not you've still not read that? No. Sometimes when you get in, you get involved with a book, you read it as as you go along. But in Secret Wars, it was you know being produced with lettering, paste ups, and stuff. So um, towards the end, you know, so I, I I could read the beginning, but somewhere in the middle there, it got lost. So what's the most recent uh, comic that you've read? Hmm. Batman Year One. <laughs> no, actually, that was a really good series, though. Uh, wow. Um, you know, I started reading the first collected edition of, was it Batman White Knight? Mm -hmm. Not the current one, but the first one. I think I read the first issue and half of the second. And it's not that I didn't like it. I just stopped reading it. I never got back to it. I think... Uh, uh, I know the train kicked in right when I was, I can hear that. Can you hear that? Oh, I can hear it. I was going to say, I, I think I tend to watch more YouTube videos. As you know, I've been watching a lot on watercolor and drawing. So a lot of my free time is spent watching, uh, watching stuff on YouTube and, and then trying to apply what I've learned. I did. I, I like I told you this morning, I did pick up and this is all through Comixology that uh, Silver Surfer Black. And I do want to give that a read because I'm intrigued by it. I've I've heard. I like the artwork. Uh, quite a bit, and I've heard it's a very interesting story. By Mr. Donnie Cates, so I'm kind of interested you didn't even pick it up, right, Ron? I have uh, a couple. Did you read them? Did you? No. Okay, so you can't really comment on the story, right? I cannot. I just, I heard people say, and I've, I've seen, I watched like a couple of reviews on YouTube, and they were all very positive. Adam wants to know how about the Snyder Capullo's Batman run. I have not. I don't know where that starts and where it ends or if it's still just one long continuous. Uh, you know, I, I, I don't know where the numbering on stuff is anymore. So I don't know, like, where to pick up or, you know, where to buy.
Well, theirs started at one during the new 52 run. It's pretty dang good in Adam's opinion, and he's not a Batman guy. See, that's uh, okay, but what year? I mean, you know, 2016? I have no idea about that. When they started all that new stuff and not knowing what to do with it, I kind of checked out. Well, AG's here. He says, good morning. He's got the oversized trade, but hasn't checked it out. Uh, what? The Probably the Snyder Capullo's Batman run. Well, there's an oversized on Silver Surfer, too. Okay. So. Well, Silver Surfer Black. Let me clear that up. Well, Ken says he has the run in graphic novels. He'll loan it to you. Ah, uh, no, don't do that. That could be that could be dangerous. Oh, uh, Ron! Ron lent me. Uh, what was it, Ron? Sniper. Oh, the DVD. Yeah. Yeah. And I've never watched it, and it's somewhere buried in my bedroom. Because I don't have a DVD player. Well, the hyper potato is here. He says, hey, what's the dynamic duel of Ron and the legend up to this morning? Oh, I like that. The legend. That's. See, he, he doesn't come into Gerald's stream. And it is Gerald, right? Hyper? Gerald? AG said it was the Silver Surfer book. Yeah, that's the oversized one. I'm, I, I, I'll, you know, I might pick that up after, after I read it if I like it enough. If I read it, you know, if I get it done. I like those uh, little bit oversized books. I do have Tokyo Ghosts that way. I have it in two, I think two trade paperbacks, but. Yeah, I got it at that that comic shop that I that you and I went to that time you were over here, Ron, in Altamont. Mm -hmm. Remember, we it's like pretty close to me. I mean, if I truly wanted a, a really good comic shop, I would just. It's not that far of a drive for me, as you saw. Yeah, it takes about maybe forty minutes. I would just, you know, because my local guy here, he's great and everything, but he just, you know, he doesn't put stuff out on the shelves or anything, so I can't just browse and maybe make that buy that, you know, I don't want to purchase something and then go, oh, you know, and it's like, and and he's kind of, you know, and, and I get it, you know, he, he can't really afford to just keep his shelves with, a bunch of new stuff that he's got to take a risk on. Mm -hmm. So I fully understand his positioning, but it doesn't help me. So I therefore have no need to make a weekly comic book run. Well, Coffee Breath said he just binged Ice Cream Man. It was a really interesting book. He has to go pretend that he's a sixth grade math teacher now. Take care. What's that now? Coffee Breath. He just binged Ice Cream Man. It was a really interesting book. Now he has to go pretend he's a sixth grade math teacher. So take care. He's going back to work. Oh, okay, Coffee Breath. Ice Cream Man, what is that? Apparently a really interesting book. Book or comic? Well, I'm going to go with comic since we're talking about them. But he said interesting book. And comics are books, sir. Yeah, I, I understand. I'm just like, you know, inquiring because I've never heard of it. But that doesn't <laughs> that doesn't mean a lot because.
Boy, can you hear that construction going on at all? Nope. It's like across the street, they're they're only going to have one lane of traffic going um, north. And the rest is going to be a bigger sidewalk. And maybe, I, I want to say, I think they had plans to build some new businesses around the area. Now, I don't know, you know, how this shutdown that's now semi lifted is going to affect everything going forward, but I'm sure it's going to, it's not stalling the, the, you know, clearing of the, the sidewalk over there. They've tore that up. Um, can't park over there anymore. Can't even drive on that side anymore. I don't think. No. Yeah, you can. I think. And, and I think it's in sections, but Well, Jay Wilson said, I've read a bit of the Snyder Capullo Batman run, Court of Owls, City of Owls, and Death in the Family, and enjoyed it. I'm slowly getting into DC stuff, but I enjoyed those stories. Noah Hyper Potato said, Gerald Albright, he's talented too. Too young to be a legend. He is the grasshopper. You are the sensei. Ah. Ken said he loves those oversized artist editions. He has three of them signed by you. Three of them signed by me. The Mike Zek one, the Kelly Jones one, and I think the covers one. That's going to be my guess. Mr. Gorell's here. He says, good morning. Hello, Mr. G. ALD collects. He says, Ice Cream Man is an anthology comic. Each issue is a new story. Heard really good stuff about it, but never read it himself, though. Ah, now, see, that's kind of fun. You get a little taste of everything. Zablo likes the, uh, the crime, uh, independent crime books, both graphic novels, comics, and or novels. That's kind of always been Zablo's jam is the crime book. As you may or may not know, Mr. Trebek. When you're filling in blacks, are, are you thinking about where you're starting at in any particular order or reason for that? Is that a question from you? Yeah, I'm just uh, trying to. Um, depending on, you know, if I'm using like what I, you know, I'll call real ink. Yes, because I don't want to run my hand through wet ink. Now the Pentel pocket brush I use, the ink is, I, I really like the way the ink dries. It's a nice matte finish. It's waterproof, which I also like. Um, but I try to, usually I try to work like up and down or, you know, top to bottom or across. 
so that my hand's not going into wet ink and smearing. Not to say that I haven't done it before, but that's how you learn to stop doing it. So yeah, there is, you know, there's a little bit of thought that needs to go into it. Thank you for your question, Mr. Wynn. I understand. Keep the conversation going. You're mm -hmm. good. And that's a good question. I would just guess that if you're left-handed, you maybe go bottom to top, you know? When you're inking your lines, do you prefer pushing or pulling a line? Uh, when do you use either technique and uh, why? Um, a lot of it depends on the curve of the line, whether my hand can comfortably go into the position that's needed. And also... Uh, just depending on what I feel is going to be more of a comfortable position. Um, you begin to find out, you know, like for me, it's easier to go this way. So sometimes I don't go this way, but sometimes I do depending on the line. So sometimes I push out, sometimes I pull the lines in. Um, most of my feathering, uh, I'll show you some right here on this chest area. I do the thin pulling into where it's going to go black, thin to thick. But I also push out this way on certain other lines, which, you know, if you just watch, if you watch me work, you'll begin to notice it. It's something I'm not really conscious of anymore. It's just kind of wired in. And as you can see, those lines I did pull because I wanted this little bit of taper left here to indicate that little, like, furry eyebrow. So good morning to everybody who has maybe just showed up. Ink in a few, hopefully quick sketches this morning. I always intend them to be fast, but sometimes the drawing dictates the speed. Or I should say the character. And sometimes I'm just stuck in first gear and only know one speed. Which is which is probably closer to the truth, right, Ron? <laughs> Perfectionist is a speed. You'll also notice sometimes when I ink, I'll kind of sculpt a line. You know, I'm 
I'm kind of drawing it more than once because it's, you know, say you're working in clay or something and you maybe you're pushing with your thumbs or something and you don't quite get it to your liking the first time. So I'll, I'll rework it a couple of times until I get that look that I want. It's kind of like with these eyes here, you know, it's like I'm just going to pull down. I'm not going to worry about the bottom part here because I'm going to go back over it. So there's different types of ink. There's matte, there's gloss. Um, what would you choose for a particular project and why using those different types of mats or gloss or? No, I just like matte ink, really. I don't like the shiny stuff. I There's no... Um, I don't know anyone who really likes real shiny ink. I mean, that's, you know, I don't know anyone that's like, oh, yeah, I, I prefer my ink to have like a sheen to it. Um, everybody tends to like it kind of matted. Every it reflects less light so especially when you're doing a piece of original art um and this is not a slam this is just a, a, a truth a lot of collectors you know they they want their art as clean as possible um it's like they almost don't want to see brush strokes which you know, I kind of, I kind of get, but in a way it's like, to me, seeing brush strokes and pen strokes and stuff and uh, maybe some whiteout or something, that's part of the artistic process. So, um, but yeah, I mean, some, some people are very picky. Now, if it's a published page, there's not a lot they can do about it. But if you're doing a commission, it's always, you know, I've, I've heard people complain about things that, you know, oh, I could see like, you know, the ink wasn't like perfectly black, you know, from top to bottom. There were some gray areas or, you know, stuff like that. And I'm like, well, yeah, it's a piece of original art, you know. Well, Boatwright family and comics is in the chat. He says, hello. Hey, good morning, Boatwright and family. Thanks for the subscription. I do appreciate it. Well, I went and posted uh, my email where people can contact me to get on your list. Okay. I appreciate that, sir. Boatwright says uh, he's good. He's at work right now. All right. Hyper Potato says, I've bought a lot of commissions. I've never complained about the ink. I've been disappointed because the artist did something like flash a female character's panties or something crazy, but never ink. And he did what? Flash a female I've, character? I've been disappointed because the artist did something like flash a female character's panties or something crazy, but never upset about the ink. Ah. Oh. 
Well, that's good. Wants to keep them PG. I had someone one time, uh, I was setting up a commission through them and they're like, oh, you, you want me to do it nude? I'm like, no, please, costume. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, that used to be more, people used to request more nudity, I think, in the past than they do now. I, I, I haven't had a request for that, like, in a long time. I mean, long time. But I'm sure that some of the people that get it are, you know, maybe like Adam Hughes or someone that's known for girl art, which I am definitely not. But, you know. And the only nudity I'm into doing right now would be like for drawing, you know, figure study or something. Yeah. See, and, Hyper's goal is to be able to display his art. Tops, right. Stockings and garters, fine, but panties are no no. I guess it's a small difference, but I stay away from the undies. Well, I would agree with that because, you know, you do Black Canary, you get the fishnet stockings, right? I mean, it's part of the costume, so I understand that. I mean, there's some, you know, I don't know if I, I, I might have to just go solid black on, I'm, I'm thinking I'm going to go solid black on Craven's hair here because that little white strip just... It doesn't look right even without the blacks filled in. Mm-hmm. And that's something that, you know, I mean, I can see it now before I even do it. So um, that's something that kind of you, you begin to pick up, uh, as you mature and, and as an artist, not, <laughs> not mature, you know, mentally, but you know, you, you can begin to see stuff like, yeah, you know, I don't really have any other highlights. It's there. It's kind of looking out of place. It's not going to look good filled in. I mean, I could do it and you could see it, but I know that, you know, we've got dark, 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 so just that highlight strip there is going to suddenly look quite out of place. So we can, we can definitely get rid of that. What I'm doing is just stretching this eraser out now because that cleans it, believe it or not. Boatwright wants to know what paper are you using? Oh, I'll show you. I was just reaching for another pen. So I'm using the Strathmore Mixed Media uh, 400 series. And it's uh, six by eight inch sheets. It's a nice, uh, nice thick paper. Mario Mario Jr. 32 is in the room and says, the master at work. Hey, hey, Mario Mario. 
Good morning. I guess it's still morning. It's getting towards afternoonish, right, Ron? It's still morning. It's ten fifty-six. We got an hour and four minutes of morning. And then it becomes noon. Ron, does the second afternoon become afternoon? Or do you need the full minute? Well, I think it'd be uh, the second, right? Because it's afternoon. PM. 12, 12 o'clock is p.m. One second after that is afternoon, maybe. Yeah. So we got morning, we got noon, and then afternoon. And then technically, what time does evening start? Sunset? I don't know. It could be different every day if it's sunset. That's what I go by, sunset. That becomes evening. Well, Boatwright says, awesome, thanks. You're welcome. Uh, I know you go by Boatwright family, but do you personally have a first name that maybe we can get to know? Uh, well, Boatwright says it's only noon for one second. It's only what? It's only noon for one second. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. No, no, that's his name. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Mr. G says the strive for 500 is on. We're doing a giveaway and trying to get this legend to at least 500. Like and share, everyone. Yes, thank you. And uh, what time, uh, what, you know, I, I did, whoa. <laughs> That does happen. Don't push time. down so hard. <laughs> yeah, I know. Uh, I know you want to have me on, and I'm up for that as long as it's not like uh, at 2 a.m. in the morning. <laughs> so as his manager, John does not stream after 9 p.m. No, I, I came down here once from 10 to 11 to do an interview. Uh, That's right. But they don't want just an interview. They want art. They want legendary art and they get legendary art at 4 a.m <laughs> that's when the legend's doing his art <laughs> uh everyone calls him boat okay boat boat works and that'll be easy to remember And Mr. G, I did watch the video with you teasing people with that Doctor Strange. Well done, sir. While you are, are in here, before you leave, if you decide to leave, please hit the like button for me, if you can. I would very much appreciate it. Mr. G says uh, he can do it whenever you're available. Oh, he'll wow. Have he'll have Barbarian set it up. Perfect, then. You know, er early evening is fine, too. Like 7, 8, something like that.
So it doesn't have to be, you know, in the middle of the day. Um, Taking a call. Okay. Thank you, Mario. Mario, do appreciate them. And Boat says he's going to win, Mr. Garrell. I like that. That's a good attitude. I have not seen Miss Seen. It sounded like I said seem. I have not seen Mr. Uh, Rod Line, formerly Rod Line, in in my stream the last few times. Hoping he's doing well. I am only streaming this out to YouTube today. No Twitter, but Lloyd used to come in on Twitter. <laughs> Very good. Glad you're getting some uh, some interest going there. Good to hear.
All right. I think that will do it for Craven. <clears throat> Sorry if you hear me uh, drinking a little Diet Coke here, a little caffeine. Haven't went back to coffee yet, waiting on that 30-day period, but it's still taking a little caffeine. Whoa, come here, Craven. All right. So, uh huh. Tiger Shark from Submariner. Yes, this is my semi copy of John Buscema's profile shot from Submariner number six. Oh, those issues of Submariner and Silver Surfer that Buscema was doing around that time period are just absolutely gorgeous. I'm going to actually erase a little bit of the pencil. Tap it out. I, I really, uh, I'm a big fan of, of John B. Simmons' work, especially around the period of um, Silver Surfer, Submariner. Uh, when he was doing the Avengers, the run that he had on that, incredible stuff. His FF, uh, I don't know how many issues he did a Fantastic Four with Joe Sennett inking, but incredible his, his figures are just so fluid. Well, thank you, Mario. Mario. Whoop. All right. Let's get some ink on this. Well, thank you, Mr. G. I do appreciate the kind words.
I hope that you all liked uh, the time lapse video that I posted. Um, was that yesterday? I think it was Wednesday. I enjoyed doing it. Um, had it not took me three and a half hours to edit it because that was my first ever edit. I wanted to really go back and do a, a narration instead of just music, but I also wanted to post it and see what the reaction would be. It was a good reaction. Yeah, it was. Um, so I will do more of those um, coming up. I'll even take some of these and do it and maybe... Well, these these will be shorter. These I can get down to probably a couple minutes, three minutes. That one went to nine minutes. Um, it was a learning process, so. Uh, but yeah, I want to definitely get into um, pre-recording stuff and releasing it as opposed to just live streaming all the time. I enjoy the comments and the interaction and I don't, I, I get that live, of course, when I live stream, but I don't really get the comments if I post something, so. Well, Boat said he's got to get back to work. Have a great day. Stay safe. It's a jungle out there. All right, Boat, you do the same. Take care. Appreciate you stopping in. AG said, even before you said it, that's a very... Buscema-esque face, buffeting <laughs> well, waist. I, <clears throat> right on my iPad, I've got the uh, the cover to number six. So, yes, I am, I am swiping off of uh, Big John, and I am proud to be doing it because that man could draw. And I have no other real good. This uh, my 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 friend Nate, my buddy Nate, had me up uh, him and Kevin to their show in Muscle Shoals, Alabama. This is going to him, and uh, it was funny. I was just looking at um, Yusema's Submariner and Silver Surfer stuff within the past week, and. Uh, Before he he got this on the last round, and I was a little late getting to it, so it'll be done today. Along with, um, he's got this Hulk piece coming to him. So, anyhow, since I'm since I really don't know the character, I may as well just uh. Use Mr. Busima and give it the old high school try. Not traced. I just drew it uh, as I looked. So why yes, I do have the price sheet handy, Adam. I'm going to put my email back up there. You go ahead and email me. I'll send it your way.
All right, Adam, I have uh, replied back to you, but just so you know, uh, today these are a little cheaper than his normal commission price list. Today is $50, but the whole list is uh, sent your way. So you can get in on today still. I'm thinking about having a sale on my birthday on the bigger commissions. <laughs> that was something I was thinking about. My birthday, but the customer saves, Ron. Which, by the way, is coming up on May 6th. For those of you... Who, for those of you who care, <laughs> I don't really care. I'm, I'm too old to care about birthdays anymore. Those are for my son, Jacob, and my lovely wife. When Jacob keeps telling me he can't wait till he's 13 so he can do YouTube and all this other stuff he can't do, I'm like, Jacob, don't grow up too fast on me. But, you know, that's less than six years away now. Well, I mean, he's still got to get to eight in December, but you know what I'm saying? He'll be there faster, faster than I want him to, Ron. Yes, he will. Well, Hyper Potato says he likes sales. Want to know when your birthday was? I thought I'm the sixth. Potato, I still got uh, I got a vigilante to do for you. If I am correct, I believe. Which now that Heroes Con is uh, not going to happen, we'll have to, I think we're going to have to mail it. Unless, unless the show in Daytona still goes on in October and you want to wait that long. And Jared, I think he's going to be a guest in Daytona this year. Isn't that... I, didn't didn't Jared mention that to us, Ron? I think he said he I, wasn't invited yet. No, I think he's I I thought he was. For Daytona? Yeah. It's in October. Mr. G says, shouldn't we pay more on your birthday? <laughs> well, yeah. His his tip jar will still be open. Yes, exactly. If he has a sale and you feel that bad about it, you can just tip him extra. You you can pay whatever you want over the asking price. I'll put out his... Uh, studio address and we can all have pizza and birthday cake delivered yeah that'll be great
And then I get back on my uh, healthy eating plan the day after. Can't do it now. Been too sloppy. Birthday's coming up. I know I'd fall right off, so there's no point. I'll wait another, what, four or five days? So one of the reps uh, that always come around text me because since our office is closed, they text me now, which is more annoying. <laughs> and uh, she goes, when is this pandemic going to end? This isolation is killing me. I said, I don't know. Hopefully never. Because <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Ron's loving it. Oh, yeah. I forgot. You don't like people. I said, I like some people. She said, I hope I made the list. I gave it a nice 10 minute pause. And then I said, well, you're not on the list of people I don't like. So there's that. <laughs> <laughs> no comment. <laughs> uh. You know, I read this. I, well, I didn't read it. I skimmed it. There was a article in our local newspaper, and I, I don't know if it was written national or just locally, but they were talking about, you know, what school going to look like for like the coming year. Um, because I, I'm not so sure they're they're ready to put kids back in. Uh, in a, a situation, you know, full of other kids after this. Um, but they were, but then here's the weird thing is they, they said something about it might be a two to three day school week at the school and then the rest would be done at home, which seemed kind of odd. And I know that that could put a lot of people that will be going back to work, hopefully, into a bad position in a sense, you know. Hyper Potato says, I don't mind staying at home. I'm used to it. Dealing with my kids 24-7 is what is tough. Can't run from that. <laughs> can't run. Can't hide. The potato is loose. He's like, hey, let's play hide and go seek. You guys hide. <laughs> yeah. There you go. An hour later, he starts hearing, Dad, are you coming? <laughs> yeah, I'm looking for you. I'm just having trouble finding you. You guys are good at this. You guys are good at this. Keep hiding. <laughs> sitting sitting on the couch reading some comic books. Man, it's you right all are. Every now and again, you just got to go like, you all are the best. I've looked <laughs> everywhere. Right now, you know, he's like, wait, I didn't think of that. I can do that. <laughs> yeah. Kids, Kids go hide. We're, we're having fun. And you, I was reading something. Maybe it was on Twitter. And somebody was really going through like a stack. They said they literally had like about a five feet stack of comic books that they were finally getting caught up on. 
It's a lot of comics. It is. But, you know, I'm sure there were some trade paperbacks and stuff, but still, that's, you know. Five feet's a bit of a stretch, but I, believe me, I know it can happen. If you don't have them in boxes, books can, uh, they can stack up. You know, uh, yeah, and I'm not the only one, so I'm I'm not I'm not just crying in my uh, in my beer. But I think I shared with you, Ron, like the stuff I wanted to accomplish this year. Yep. Didn't I? I like when I made that like my goals or my whatever sheet. Yeah. And some of it was like, okay, you know, this is like very important. This is, you know, I mean, I don't know if I actually had it in, in an order of importance, but I just had made like a sheet of, of things that I, I really wanted to accomplish this year. That and I'm not free plague. <laughs> what? That was also pre-plague. Yeah, that well, that's that's my point. I was gonna say it's not that it, you know, maybe couldn't still happen, but the odds are it won't, which is kind of sad. Kind of sad. Yeah. Piper said he's gone outside, cut a lot of grass, washing cars, which he rarely does. Anything to help avoid the family. <laughs> he he doesn't need to go cut Gerald's grass. I guess he wants to, though. Actually, I don't think he lives that close to Mr. Albrecht. Uh, let's see. Where are you at, Ken? Zablo tweeted something just to gross me out, he said. Must be a picture of his... <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's so much I could do with that. But I won't. Hyper, I really hope Mr. Gerald, I, I can't quit calling him that now, knows how much we like teasing him. I hope he understands. Well, AG cut the grass yesterday himself. Man, I hate yard work. I, I, I stopped doing it I, yeah, decades ago. When I when I finally realized my dad just made it look fun. Boy, he Tom Sawyered me good. You like to cut grass, Ron? On a riding mower. And when it's not Hundred degrees out. See, that's the thing. I think we've had this discussion before. I just don't think I like the the outdoors. I mean, not the outdoors when it's nice and kind of cool and stuff. I don't like the hot outdoors cutting grass. Yeah, it makes me feel all itchy and bad and. Ugh.
And that's why I'm glad that there are people that own yard services that actually love cutting grass and working uh, as landscape people that you can pay to have that done. Because I just never, once I, once I got free from it, <laughs> oh man. Well, Hyper says he hates the heat. He hates the snakes. He's allergic <laughs> to everything. But the feeling of accomplishment is awesome. It, and I agree with that. He's absolutely right. I was going to say that uh, just before I was going to wait till I did that lo long line. I said the only thing is that it was for me, at least it was like kind of a form of exercise. And I would work up a sweat, but man. I'm kind of like, I feel itchy afterwards and I mean like a, an allergic itchy, you know, I, it, it's probably just psychological. All right. I am going to call for a quick a restroom break after I'm done with this one. For those of you that are interested, <laughs> that didn't sound right. Are you inviting them with you? <laughs> yeah, I know. That's why I said it didn't sound right. If anybody would like to join me. <laughs> For those interested, I'll be going to the bathroom. Feel free to tag along. I am on the second floor. YouTube channel about to get shut down real fast. Yeah, right? As soon as I said that, I'm like, man, it made it sound like I'm inviting people to join me. There, my air conditioner kicked on. Good. They'll have something to listen to. <laughs> now, I should probably let that dry before I race because sometimes these markers do smudge so i will do a quick restroom run right now uh let me see okay good to go uh let's check one thing here wow 13 likes on uh on youtube here it's nice i appreciate it everyone and i will be right back as soon as humanly possible I guess I should mute my mic so you don't have to hear that annoying air conditioner.
Adam, what do you mean by uh, with the gear shoulders? Oh, wait, no, I got you. Okay, I am back. I don't know why it was there this morning, but the mirror in the men's room is now gone. <laughs> it's not shattered. It's been removed from the wall. So maybe they're going to repaint the bathrooms. Maybe they're replacing the mirror, although I don't know why, unless maybe it got cracked between. Let's see, when was I down here? Um I was down here, gosh, like 5.30. So Adam wants to know about Iron Man 2020. It's the one that had the gears on the shoulders. Um, any interest in doing a uh, one of those front views? Uh, yeah, no. That's... Uh... that be more of a uh yeah that a bust of a nine by twelve yeah yeah that's not really a, a headshot all right adam so you heard the man if you want to do that if you want to go nine by twelve we can do that. He said that's fine. He just thought he'd check. Yeah, no problem. Um, there's just certain characters like I, I number one i don't really care to do iron man in particular but that one's man i did two remarks uh i think that i think it was at the tampa show last year and i was sitting next to bob layton of War Machine, and what's the other Iron Man that has all the extra, like, the guns and stuff? There's War Machine, and isn't there another one? Oh, the Hulk, Hulk Blaster? Buster. Hulk Buster, yeah. Man, I said yes to those before I saw them, and then I got the <laughs> reference, and I was like, yeah, oh boy. Those wound up taking me like a real longer than, you know, things like this that I consider simple. Adam, you did order something from me before, though, right? I think I remember having to write and get his address. Um, I think he's done Iron Man before. Uh, no, I think I've only done one, and that was for uh, Noah. Remember, it was a gift from, I think, Mike Ehring gifted his nephew. Yeah, I remember that, but that was recently, I think, in the past. We'll see what he says.
He said, yeah, it was an Iron Man 6x8. Oh, was it? Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I remember I did. Now, yeah, I do remember that. Yeah, that was weird going in there and seeing the mirror. Like, you know, it's like, boom. Somebody jacked the mirror. He said you had signed it 2020, and he thought that would look cool with the 2020 armor. Since your signature, you're, you're dating under it 2020. Right. If I'm desperate towards the end of the month, which I could be, Adam, <laughs> see me then. Well, I have your email, Adam. So if uh, he ends <laughs> up saying something to me, I'll email you if you want me to. It's an interesting uh it's an interesting costume. I would not want to do that on a monthly uh grind though. Wow, that that detective guy shuts his door hard, doesn't he? How else do detectives shut doors? Well, slam it with authority or sneaky. I guess it depends. Got a scare crime. <laughs> I just like, like I said, in Ozark where it's like, you know, one crime leads to something else. And then that involves like, then you find out someone else is involved. Well, not you personally, but. You know, the family, the story, they, yeah, you know, it just starts to snowball. Yeah, <laughs> but that's, that's the normal uh, recipe for all of them. It's like you, you clearly see, wow, this is going to be a bad decision. And you watch right. them take that decision. Yeah. But then someone else gets involved, you know, just like I said, the snowball thing. And, you know, in actuality, that truthfully, that's the way it is in real life. It's just. When it's presented like that in a show, it's like it it makes you think like, you know, that's how it really is. I don't know that from firsthand knowledge, but I could see where it's it's really rooted in truths, you know, like that is how it happens. You know, you've always heard the thing about you, you get in too deep or over your head. And that kind of proves it, you know, it's like. Um, you know, I, I. I've tried to explain, you know, sometimes, uh, you know, because when I was over in the Philippines, my wife would explain to me that it wasn't safe for me to like go out for a walk by myself and it's kind of hard for me to understand why you know 
but she knows you know she knew the area in manila and stuff and she's like nope you know you can't you can't go out <laughs> like, we don't have the ransom money for you sir yeah and i'm like well what's a bunch of four foot seven people gonna do to me <laughs> with machetes a lot well yeah i mean i was just like you know and it was even worse when we were in one of the malls and about 10, 10 little kids come up to me, you know, mostly little boys. I think there may have, you know, and they, they saw me as just, you know, the, the, the big white guy, if I, you know, I'll just say it like it is. And they were like, you know, Hey, how you doing? You know, just as happy as could be, you know? And I'm like, how are you all? You know, what's going on? while they're picking your pockets. Well, and then Bella came out and said a few things to him in a very like determined tone. You know the tone, Ron. No, I guess you don't. <laughs> I've heard the tone over the phone. Yeah. Uh, in a very serious uh, tone, you know, she would say something. And then I was like, hey, why would you, you know, Why'd you run the kids away? I, you know, they were saying hello and stuff. She goes, yeah, one of them probably has a razor blade or a knife and they're going to cut your pocket and let your wallet, you know, come out and take it. And I said, nah, those kids are like, she goes, it don't matter. Anyhow, I carry, I, I carry my wallet in my front pocket anyway. So I would have, you know, back pocket wouldn't have mattered. Yeah, but if they got a razor blade, you don't want them cutting anywhere around your pockets. <laughs> that, that's what I'm talking about. So, yeah, it was kind of weird that even this innocent looking little group of kids that were, you know, to me, they were just excited to, you know, see a big foreigner walking through the mall. No, I watch Slumdog Millionaire. I'm What's trusting that? those little kids. What is Slum? I've never seen that. Oh, is, that on, good... is that on Netflix? Uh, it was a movie. I don't know if it's on Netflix. Um, it was good. I've heard of it, I, I but I, I never. It took place in India. But it's the same thing, right? Same bunch... kind of. Well, no, but there was like one scene or a few scenes with a bunch of little kids ripping people off those little kids are you know you gotta watch them <laughs> now on the flip side this well-dressed he wasn't a young kid he was probably 14 13 or something he came up to us when we were eating in the food court in the mall and he started telling Bella something, you know, I couldn't understand it. And Bella looked at me and he, she said, Hey, his, you know, he's telling me his sister is sick in the hospital and they need some money to get her some medicine. And I, I kind of looked at her with doubt in my eyes, as I'll say, <laughs> like, uh-huh. And you're, you're believing this. I, I'm like, do you see the picture? See, she missed this part. The picture was she's sitting there with me and he comes right over to the person most likely to have money, you know, sitting in a yeah. food court is, is a foreigner. And that's, you know, that's not to slight anyone. It's just, it's a truth. And starts telling her and then, you know, so... I'm like, Bella, I, you know, I, I don't, I don't trust this kid, you know? I'm sorry. I just sent all my money to a prince in Nigeria. Yeah. <laughs> right. So, okay. But now here's, here's the, the good side of the story. So Bella's still kind of feeling guilty or something, you know? And she's like, well, okay. If you think he's not telling the truth. And I said, well, I said, I hope I, I said I hope his sister's really not sick. I said, but you know, there's nothing, you know, 
I have money for us here in, you know, for for my trip with you. I said, so I can't really be dolling it out, you know, and so we're walking the rest of the mall and we go by a internet cafe, which they have a lot of over there. They did when I was over there in 2007. Where he's blowing the money? Well, also in these internet cafes, you can you can play like games on the PCs. So he's sitting there playing a game. No, I didn't give him any money. No, 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 no. I made that clear. I I said no. I said I something ain't right. So I, I'm the one that saw him. I saw him like, you know, I saw his shirt. Like I said, he had a nice dress shirt on. And um so I called Bella over and I said, Hey, I said Remember that kid? She's like, yeah. I said, come here. I want to show you something. And I went to the window and I said, you think if his sister's really that sick, he would be sitting there playing that video game and, and you know, the money that, that, that uh, she, he was asking for her is probably, you know, whatever he got from anyone else, if, if anything, is going into that, uh, renting that, that computer for an hour or half hour or whatever. So as a kid, when you were a child, did you ever do anything that was shady like that or slightly illegal or deceitful or I remember, I think I was probably like six or something and, uh, going in to a little corner store and taking a piece of gum and then getting my uh, arse handed to me by my grandmother, march back <laughs> up there, give over the little nickel, have to apologize. And that was the, my last bout with crime. No, I, you know what? I really didn't. Cause I was always afraid <laughs> of getting caught, but I do remember one thing I did. Okay. So here's the El Tiger shark. Um, I can't remember the name of the store. Um, but uh, we're going to do Bane next here for Shannon. I don't know if he's still in the room or not, but um, there was some like action figure. He was more like a Ken doll or a GI Joe or something type thing. He was a knight and they had a horse and he had his whole suit of armor and stuff. And it was, this was a like a department store and it had a toy section, but I was intrigued with the helmet that could actually come on and off of his head. Mm -hmm. So, and, and I mean, they had one out on display so that you could play around with it, you know, and, I took, I, I took the helmet, I pulled it off his head and my parents were still shopping and I went to the, you know, the front door where the, you know, the doors open when you step on it. I took like one or two steps outside. I threw it like over into some mulch or under a bush or something and then just circled back around and went back in the store. And of course, when we go outside, what do I do? But hey, look what I found. And I still remember that to this day. That, you know, that's like pretty weird because. I mean, technically, I guess it was stealing. Yeah. But but to the young me, it was like, mm, you know, uh, I found it. <laughs> Shannon is here. He says, woohoo, looks great even without the ink. Oh, well, okay. I'll just ink the eyes. <laughs> no, I wouldn't do that to you, Shannon. Not today, at least. 
but yeah, so you know, that was like a That was that that you know when I think about that now now that I just you know retold that story What if what if I would have been caught tossing you know taking that step outside the door with that little helmet I mean it wasn't the whole thing it was just the helmet mm -hmm. Keep that in mind before you judge me Oh, it, it probably would have been the same thing. They they would have I called your parents. You wouldn't have been able to sit right for a few days. But it's weird that I was just obsessed with the helmet that I just, you know. I want that helmet. I, I don't know. It just, it was cool. It was like a knight's helmet. It had the little thing that would close. You know, the, the face guard thing? Mm -hmm. And it just popped off, and I was like, hmm. I'm like, if I put it in my pocket, that's stealing. That's that's kind of probably what I was thinking, you know? But if I find it when I go outside... <laughs> not as bad, right? Yeah. Oh, well, let's ask Shannon. <laughs> No, what is it? Uh, like Dell, what should my father have done? Although, they, see, they didn't know. They literally thought I found something. Yeah, that was good. What should my father have done? Cut off you, her hand. You know, you, well, he never really answered it, did he? No. But do you remember when Marty like gave the answer? Yeah. But it wasn't the first it wasn't the first time it was like it was when Dell came out to um to the Ozarks, right? Yep. And I I loved his answer. I thought it was great cuz it was probably the truth. Yep. It's not the first time she stole. It was the first time she got caught. Right. And I was like, man, you know what? I didn't I didn't even think about that answer. But when he said that, I was like, that's perfect. That's probably what was happening. Well, we probably know what Dell's father did. That lady probably... Uh, well, not necessarily. Dell's father's not Dell. And if he was working a, a shop like that, like a mom and pop store. You think? Yeah, maybe he just raised a horrible child. He didn't tell Dell what people to stay away from. <laughs> he was too busy, dedicated to their family grocery store. See, there, there's a series for you. We'll have a series about Dell's father. <laughs> that, yeah, a spinoff series. And, and and his dad's like the nicest man. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and Dell's Del's running little schemes like he's, he's 12 years old and he's having his bigger friends bully kids for their lunch money and stuff. I'll tell you a scene I'm having trouble getting out of my mind now. I I can't remember her name, but it was it was the Snells in bed. And <laughs> I didn't know who it was at first. I it totally escaped me. You probably don't remember it, Ryan, because it's been a while. Ron? Yeah. I it, don't know. You know, when they were in bed and and
Nope, don't remember. Uh oh, we had a uh, a little buffer. You still there? Yeah, I'm here. Can okay. Yeah, we just had a buffer there. I heard it go silent for a second. All right. Um. Well, you know they were they were doing their man and wife thing. Yeah, I, I still don't remember her name. Yeah, I don't remember her name either. But do you remember the scene? Not really. Okay. <laughs> Be that way. Sorry. I'm just saying they were, you know, doing the man and woman thing. Adam said there are so many huge moments in that show. <laughs> There's some good stuff going on there. Man and wife thing. You mean arguing? No. <laughs> And then again, she talks about wanting a baby. And Mr. Snell says, honey, you know we're too old for that. Anyway, see, I'm just always late to the party, so this stuff is fresh in my head and not in everyone else's, so I'll, I'll bring you all up to speed. The, the last episode I watched, and if you're watching Ozark and you haven't seen it yet, then you can just tune out for a second. The last one I watched this morning <laughs> was where the... Bird family finally got arrested by the FBI. Okay, that's it. That's it. So I think I'm probably about halfway done with the second season, I guess. Or a third of the way. Well, then you're almost half done with all of them. Yeah, something like that. I'm trying to, I, I think I watch about two a day. One in the morning and then one before I go to bed. If I can hold my eyes open. I think I'm going to watch uh, Extraction tomorrow. You know, I was watching the previews to that. That looked pretty good. Yeah, my cousin was like, hey, let's watch uh, Thor's new movie. I go, what are, you, what are you talking about? Thor's new movie. You haven't seen it on Netflix? And I knew what he was talking about. But I go, Thor doesn't have a movie on Netflix. <laughs> it's like, yes, he does. I go, there is no Thor movie on Netflix. If there's a Thor movie, it's on Disney+. Plus." <laughs> He goes, no, the guy that played Thor. I'm like, oh, Chris Hemsworth. <laughs> I know Zablo said he liked it. He tweeted about it a few days ago. Extraction? Yeah. It's where I get all my need to know TV info. From Zablo. From Zablo. Why hasn't he popped into the stream? He's probably busy principaling a internet school. 
I'm telling you, that's that's the way they were making it sound. <laughs> Although the thing is that you know, no, that, since this is the first time around uh, that this has happened. And I don't know if it happened in all the states or if some states are still, you know, school as usual. Um, but anyway, is you know, I I hear people say stuff like, oh, you know, I feel bad for the kids that don't get to walk across the stage at graduation and stuff. And for me, I'm kind of thinking like, no, this is cooler. You know, how many other times are you like, hey, I got like a COVID-19 diploma. They will have a story. Yeah, won't they? I mean, to me, that's, you know. I mean, look at, you know, they had to take their final testing and stuff online and. What, what, what really, you know, to me, what really stands out is the school really had no idea what to do if this type of situation ever happened. They still don't know. They're still having trouble, you know, getting some kids logged in and, and being able to work the stuff. You know what I say they need to do, Ron? What is that? <clears throat> they need to talk to the Zoom and get like Zoom classroom so that the teacher could literally be there, you know? I mean, they have something, but it's it's nowhere near like the level of Zoom. I know Zoom's been in the news for some bad stuff, but they're they're getting that worked out, like some hacking and stuff, but they're using a Microsoft thing now, at least here, and it's it's not the easiest thing. It, it you know it it took a, a long time. It's it's not what they were showing us. Like here's how you get into it, and I finally figured out Jacob could download it onto his iPad, and then I said, well, they got to have a desktop version too, and I Googled it, and there it was, and I told Bella, I said, well. I think it's called Teams. It's part of Microsoft 360. And I said, here, you know, I'm sending Jacob the download. Because Jacob likes to roll that way. So I emailed my seven-year-old the, the download. He got it downloaded. They got it installed. They logged in. Boom. Perfect. We're going in the way the school was telling us was to Hey, go to Microsoft 360 or, or whatever it is. Microsoft Online. The team but, thing. What? I was going to say for, for, for Jacob, uh, to also put it in context, though, for people that don't know, he sends you invites to talk with him via Google Hangouts. Right. So he's very up to date. <laughs> he's the tech kid. He is the tech kid. And I love that because, you know, where are they going? They're going with tech. Adam's uh, got lunchtime. He'll be back in a few. All right, Adam. Thanks for dropping in. Actually, these straps are going to be black, so I may as well just uh, French curve them.
So if anyone has questions, feel free to ask. That includes you, Ron. Well, thank you. But you knew that. I did have an idea. <laughs> you had a thought in your head that it might be okay to ask a question. <laughs> So on all the Batman that you've inked before, do you have a, a favorite issue? Hmm. Does one stand out amongst the others? I did like the three-part Dead Man Batman um, only for the fact that I really liked the way Kelly handled Dead Man, the character. And I, I, I didn't get to work on it with him, you know, because when it first started in, I think, Action Comics, uh, Tony DeZuniga was inking it, I believe. And then when it was proven to be popular that Kelly could pull that scrawny dead man off, you know, then he went ahead and did the two prestige books and inked them himself. Which I don't blame him. So those those I really enjoyed. Um, just that run as a whole was a lot of fun. The if I could, you know, I'll do the opposite. I'll take one issue that I really. I probably didn't care for it was um, it was like I think it involved a postal guy or something I uh, I don't know what issue it is but it was just it was a one one part and it just, I don't know, maybe because it wasn't the the Arkham Asylum villains that I was used to, you know, it was, it could have been somebody that Doug just wanted to work in. I think it was maybe something he created, which doesn't mean that it was bad. It just, you know, when you suddenly are working on all these uh, Batman villains that you grew up on and then you get this one thrown at you that nobody's ever heard heard of and probably never will again but yeah that was a uh... That was a really fun three-year run. And as you know, we worked eight years straight together as a, as a team on Batman projects. So lots of, lots of fun on that. Now, if you were given an opportunity for a little one shot on something now, would you take it? Depends on what it was. And who was involved. I would 
I would really like one less Captain America with uh, Dematis, Zek, and I. And I'm sure JM would like it, and I would like it, but Mike is not up for it. What I find interesting is, you know, I, we're still available. Marvel didn't even, you know, they, and maybe they just know Mike would say no. But with the Symbiote Spider-Man series, they didn't even contact Mike and say, hey, do you want to do variant covers or, you know. If I was the editor, I'd just say, look, if we can get Mike Zek to do the covers, he's doing the covers. And offer him some huge money, you know? Make it worth his while. Well, AG has a non-comic related question. He said, okay. what's the best side dish with chicken wings? He thinks that you don't like chicken wings, but in general. I, I am not a big chicken wing fan, except for the ones that we're not going to get this year. At the uh, Soul uh, Meat Company, right? And that Soul is in Seoul, Korea. So the best side dish for chicken wings, well, it's got to be probably the what? Uh, uh, my wife really likes to get the um, celery and ranch dressing. To have the, uh, especially if it's like buffalo wings, so you get the the flavors. Best side dish. I mean, does pizza count as a side dish? <laughs> That's what I'm having <laughs> with my wings. Now, that is interesting, though, that pizza places started selling wings, right? Oh, I, I thought they've always sold wings. Nah, that hasn't been like... See, I'm older than you. I mean, it's been a long time. Don't get me wrong, but it hasn't been like forever. I guess just my forever, perhaps. It could be, yeah. Something like that. If I had to go, it would be blue cheese. Oh, man, that's some strong stuff. I got blue cheese on a Cobb salad one time and could not eat it. And that's why now, whenever I order a Cobb salad, if it doesn't say on the on the menu, I ask. I'm like, is that blue cheese? And some of them say, oh, yeah. And I'm like, can I substitute something? And always, yeah. They'll put some cheddar cheese on or something. and. No blue cheese dressing either. So you've never had the black and blue burger? No. Oh, it's so good. Blue cheese is too strong, my man. Or at least for me. You Ozark hillbilly types can handle that stuff. You Langmores. <laughs> I was thinking of uh, what yeah. that one like. Yeah. Langmore stocks as good as any <laughs> in these parts. That's right. You Langmores. You Langmores can eat anything. Well, he did say that that is a nice looking bane. Who did? AG. Oh, thank you, AG.
Well, he said he is with me. He loves blue cheese. Two to one. That's fine. I I, I won't tell you not to eat it. I know it's good for you, actually, isn't it? I don't know. Probably not. It's cheese. Well, it may not be good for you, then. But I mean, in general, as a cheese, I thought blue cheese was actually pretty good. Health-wise. I don't know. <clears throat> well, Hyper had to dip out to deal with the maniacs in his house. He <laughs> wants to know, what did he miss about cheese? Blue cheese, yay or nay? There is no wrong answer. <laughs> Maybe he's thinking, hmm, this is a trick question. It's not like should, it's not, it's not the, uh, does, does, um, what is it? Um, does pineapple belong on pizza question? There is a wrong answer to that. No, it does not. Right, Ron? Completely agree. No fruits on pizza. Well, tomato, is that a fruit? Yeah, well, you know what I mean. He likes it, especially if he has to eat a salad. He likes it on steak, too. Wow. I think I have had a, a a steak with a blue cheese sauce over it before. It was all right. Whoa. Maybe it maybe maybe I just got some really stank blue cheese or something. I don't know. Or maybe you boys' bellies are just hardened. Hardened to it. I remember the first time I tasted it. I tried it. I could, you can kind of get a whiff of it when it's coming up to your mouth, right, Ron? Uh, phrasing. <laughs> huh? It's a phrasing. <laughs> it just, it's not my, It's not for me. I'll just leave it at that. If you guys want to enjoy it, like I said, to each his own. 
Well, he said, crumble a little blue cheese over the top of a steak. Let it melt a little. It's a delicious compliment to the beef. Well, okay. See, that that might be different. I'm just talking about the the blue cheese crumble in a cob salad where it's just sitting there. Oh, man. Uh, I, I don't think I'm particularly fond of that either. But I do like it in the black and blue burger on my wings and on a steak. Well, see, I've never had it any other way because once I had it on a cob salad and I didn't think twice about it when it was like something I didn't know. But I remember it now. How about those really soft, smelly cheeses? Those are awful. Uh, which like, ones? Like Limburg. Oh, I've never... Never tried that. I will tell you a good cheese that Mr. Zek uh, recommended to me one time. And man, I I, I had to quit buying it because it was expensive and I was eating a lot of it. It was a uh, Havarti cheese. It's a softer yeah. cheese with yeah. dill with dill flavoring in it. Oh, man, that was good. The boar's head Havarti with dill. Mm, good stuff. I never had the with dill, but I've had just the regular, and it's, it's good. And Munster is another one of those cheeses that I consider soft that I like. That is. It's kind of soft, leaning more towards like mozzarella. Yeah, it's not extreme. Oh, alone, kind of. What about Brie? Nah. You don't like it? I don't think so. I think I've had it before. It's usually the one that's got like a little gelatinous top on it. That's the, the goat cheese, right? I don't know if it's goat cheese or not. I just know it's usually in a little like triangle. Uh, feta i'm thinking of is feta goat cheese mm, i think hopefully someone here will know i know who knows google google knows everything Yeah, feta is a white, salty Greek cheese made from the milk of ewes or goats. I don't believe that to be true all the time, sir. I bet some of the lesser ones are not made of goat or milk cheese, right? Milk yeah. cheese. <laughs> I said milk goat or uh, what did you say? What was the other... Just goat or it said you you brie is a soft cow's milk cheese yes I'll tell you a cheese that's good too that Jim Ivy uh, turned me on to is gouda yeah it's smoked gouda yep that's good stuff. Zach will occasionally get like a, a cheese platter, you know, sometimes when we're at a restaurant waiting to eat, he'll, he'll get the uh, cheese plate with, you know, it usually comes out with some fruit and some crackers. Mm -hmm. Well, I think we got that in Atlanta, didn't we? Yeah, I think so. But see, I'm usually not into that, that type of thing. I usually just experience it when he's ordering it and he's like, here, you should try this. And I'm like, I don't know what is it. My taste buds are Lang. Well, now I can't remember the name. I just said Langram. Is that what it was? Langram? 
I have no idea what you're talking about. Langmore. The last name of the family, the hillbilly family. Langmore. Langmore. Yeah. My taste buds are more like the Langmore. The only cheese I like is Mac. <laughs> Oh, that was nice going off uh, diet for a little bit and having some macaroni and cheese. Mm. You know who, uh, I didn't have it, but my sister and the kidney lady, I think she said, I, I don't think they have it all the time. I think it was one of those limited things is, Chick-fil-A had some mac and cheese. Hmm. And she said it was really delicious. But, you know, she always says that she can't eat the whole thing because of her diabetes. And I'm like, yeah, you probably shouldn't even have any of it. You know, I, I mentioned, I think you were on your call, uh, Ron. Haven't seen or heard of formerly Rod Line in here on the last few streams, I don't think. Unless he dropped in real quick and it just happened to miss him. I don't know. I feel like he emailed me earlier this week. Yeah. Probably busy. LD said he left for lunch and he comes back to cheese talk. Well, yes, <laughs> because of you is why we're talking about cheese. No, that's that's not true. true. That's not true. I think it was, uh, wasn't it? Hyper was talking about uh, the sides for wings. No. Uh, I don't no, know. It's a A G. Yeah, but was that was after? It, well, it went from you know wings to blue cheese. All the other crap we're talking about. Blue cheese talk. Let's make a, a channel just for talk on blue cheese. The haters and the lovers. I don't know how well that'd go over. <laughs> Let's find out. Do you think there's a middle ground anywhere with blue cheese? I'm, I'm sure there's middle ground with everything. Some people will probably say, yeah, I can eat it every now and again. 
Oh. I do think, though, that blue cheese, with the blue cheese dressing, is the traditional Cobb salad. I think that's the way it's it was originally uh, made. I have to uh, always make sure, like I said. I remove the blue cheese, and then I ask about the dressing, and if they say, oh, yeah, I I'm usually go for the balsamic. All right, I got to make a phone call. Okay. And a little red. Well, Shannon said Bane looks incredible. Thank you, Shannon. Appreciate it. Little touch of red on the eyes. All right. I think we're down to the last one. which is your hobo globin, hemoglobin. Yeah. Or whatever the word is I'm trying to. Hobgoblin? No. What's the Hemo uh, hemoglobin? In your blood, the hemoglobin? Yeah. There we go.
is a very nice Bane. Thank you, sir. All right, Bane, we're going to set you aside. And for Mr. Ron Vint, I, I will call him Hobo Globin. <laughs> Just because I don't know why. It's almost one o'clock. Almost. I think we'll beat two. Ron says, I hope so. <laughs> Whoops. Gravity. What are you drinking? Diet Coke. How long has it been without coffee now? Uh, I can't remember. I think sometime in last weekend I hit the, maybe it was Saturday, I hit day 21. Can you do that, Ron? I don't know that I'd want to right now, but... I didn't want to, but like I said, I, it was distracting me too much. I was, I was having too much uh, killing time with coffee. I hope when I go back to it, I, I set aside like a certain time to drink a coffee and don't let it distract me from other things, such as work. Which I don't have a lot of right now, so 
I, but I need to make work. That's the secret. You don't have work, you make work. Joseph's here. He goes, is that a hobgoblin? Yes, indeed it is, Joseph. How have you been, by the way? Joseph says, awesome. He's doing good. He hopes you and your family are doing well and staying safe. So far, everything's been all right. We'll see how that goes after they open stuff back up in Florida here on the 4th. Hopefully, nothing drastic will change. What if restaurants find out that they're still only going to be doing 25% <laughs> like they were doing with takeout or something? Oh, you mean if the numbers don't change? Yeah. You know. Oh, I'm sure they're going to change. Yeah, but I think it'll, I don't think, I, I don't know. I'm just guessing, though, that there's probably going to be a few people that want to jump out and Go to a restaurant right away, but second the beaches opened, right? They were flooded with people. Really? Yes. But the beaches were were open like day two of this. They were open, I guess, for exercise. Yeah, well but when they actually went and opened them. For lounging. Yeah. But you're still supposed to keep your distance. Okay. <laughs> right. No, I'm serious, right? I, I know we're supposed to, but what we're supposed to do doesn't always happen. Well, I'm, I, I'm talking like if you go with your family, you know, you're in the house with them. I'm talking about strangers. I bet you are going to see the restaurants will still fill up their 25% with people waiting to get in. You think it's because people are just itching to get out? I think that a good third of the people don't care and or believe in this.
Well, what's the deal on South Florida, though? Because they did get, you know, they were hit a little bit harder. I think they're supposed to have different restrictions. That's that's what, I, yeah, I didn't know if you'd heard of them or not. I, I know that when DeSantis was giving his speech, he mentioned that something about the Boca area and down there was probably going to be a little more, you know, slow opening up which i have no idea what that means except maybe they can have 10 percent in their restaurant or maybe they can't open up now who knows not high Is anybody here in the uh, stream still in a state that has a, a quarantine mandate? Just curious. That would have to be, I know, I think New York is still under something. I mean, I guess technically we're still under one. It's just being loosened. ALD says, Massachusetts and New Hampshire, I'm right on the border. AG says he's in Illinois, and they just extended it there for another month. Wow. Shannon says, Mississippi is slowly opening back up. Some cities are requiring masks to be worn in public. AG, I'm five minutes from Iowa, too, and I'm pretty sure they are close to operating as usual. Almost. Well, so just depends on what part of the country you're in. Well, if they have no cases, they don't go to anywhere to get a case and nobody from anywhere else goes to them. That's a lot of ifs. That's a lot of ifs. Where was it extended? Who who got extended for another month? Illinois. Wow. AG. Well, 
Was it bad there? I guess so. Chicago. Yeah, I know, but I don't know. I think he's kind of far away from Chicago. Didn't he write something about where he was at? Joseph said North Carolina extended it to May 8th, and then there's supposed to be some slow reopening or something. I was, I really thought we were going to get extended at least a week, at least. And how's everybody liking their, their quarantine hair? <laughs> Massachusetts extended to the 15th. I think New Hampshire will do the same today. ALD said. Hyper potato, I think here in Georgia, the shelter in place expired last night for most elderly and those with underlying conditions are still supposed to stay home. That's where he's at in Georgia. Yep. AG said, you know how I'm liking my quarantine hair, John. Nothing. <laughs> That's that's right. Because looking at the, uh, I was at the Wawa this morning and saw the uh, USA Today paper, and I I read this one statistic that I said, "Dang it, I'm stammering, stammering over st statistics." Um, said that if they could, 52% said that they would go get a haircut. I thought that was kind of funny. But how many have grown a quarantine beard? I've had a couple for like a week. And then I can't stand it anymore and shave it. I've regrown a couple. Yes, you have.
I might need to shave it though for tomorrow. Yeah, but you you kind of got to, you know. Mm -hmm. You don't have an option. Well, I guess you do, but. That's funny. I guess they could actually require, right? Like um, beard shaving if they wanted to. Yeah, they, they, they did. Oh, they did? You can't properly seal an N95 with a beard. So that first day when all you guys came in shaven, did y'all have a good laugh? No, all the ladies had a good laugh. <laughs> we all hid behind our masks and buried our heads. Said, and don't look at me. That's when you tell that one lady, hey, how come you didn't shave your beard? <laughs> you know the one. No, no, no. You know the one. There's always one. Was that insensitive, Ron? Or was that just a funny joke? Kind of funny. I don't know. I'll have to think about it. I'll get back to you. All right. AG says, I'm still bald and I have had a beard for years. I keep it nice, though. Not caveman style. <laughs> That's true. I met AG. Hey, AG. Um, speaking of that, I think it was, yeah, it was, was it last year that I was at that Pop or that funk, funk con, and they have new owners now, and the new owners are probably not going to get to have their show, or is it? Have, what have they done with that? I just thought of that because I think every show I'm doing so far is canceled except for. Cincinnati, and that's in September. I don't think Megacon has officially canceled, have they? No. I don't know what they're hoping for. I mean, I, I don't mean that to sound as negative as it did, but... I mean, when the writing's kind of on the wall. I really don't think there could be any profitable shows this year just because finances and people still, you know, in the back of their mind, not wanting to get into a, a semi-large crowd. And that's if the state even has lifted like what the 50 people ban for a large gathering. That's what I don't know.
Well, he said, yeah, it was their last year. He don't think they've canceled it since it's in Iowa. There are smaller cons that got pushed back that are still a go at the end of this month. Wow. That's taking a risk of losing. I mean, I don't even know, you know, if Daytona in October, you're still going to have those people that don't want to, like I said, just don't want to get out in the crowd. I got to admit the quarantine has kind of been a peaceful, uh, (laughs) <laughs> it's like there's a peaceful thing. Right, Ron? Nice and peaceful. Very nice. But I guess you could come over uh, (laughs) next time you get a chance. I guess so. If you're if you're feeling dangerous, I'm gonna wear my mask. There you go. Bring me one. I don't have one. I got a lot of things I got to bring over there. (laughs) Hey, you all. Well, not that many. (laughs) hey i was serious if you don't want that typography book i will i will take that the house one Mm -hmm. if you don't want it still or if it's not what you expected Yeah, I'll make sure to remember to put that in the pile. So you can have one more book you won't read and put on your shelf. No, I looked through them at least once. pile of unread comics we got to get you caught up not even read secret wars shame i've read secret wars (laughs) now now i'm gonna now i'm gonna lie what do you mean i've read secret wars i worked on it how could i not read it Actually, that's just the true story is, you know, once it got so far behind and I was behind and I was trying to catch up on work and the book was coming out. Of course, now I know it's been out 30 some odd years, plenty of time to read. (laughs) Well, I've been busy. I have been busy. It's been a busy 30 years. (laughs) 35 or 36. I've not had a moment's rest. I have not had. Ed, that's a long read, Secret Wars. I applaud anybody who reads it. Forget me watching Ozark two hours a day. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, you got to. I'm trying to keep up with the uh, with the new stuff. Mm-hmm. I got to make decisions on where I spend my free time. Yep. Besides sleeping and uh, watching, you know I don't watch a lot of TV. I, YouTube's different, and, but man, that'll get you going down that rabbit hole. All right, here's your hobgoblin. Sweet. I dig it. 
I did. Get to show all the pieces you've done this stream. Do what now? You need to show the four you've done. Okay. So we got Hobgoblin, Tiger Shark, Raven Craven, and the backbreaker, Bane. So there we go. And we are under two o'clock. That's right. So I need to use the restroom, so I may as well just say my goodbyes now. And I appreciate everybody for coming out and supporting the stream and supporting me and having a good time with Mr. Ron. Later. And uh, I want you all to have a good weekend or as best as you can. Stay safe. And uh, I guess we'll catch them next time. Right, Ron? That's right. Thank you, Shannon. Thank you, Hyper. Uh, let's see. Uh, you know, Hyper Potato, it, it conventions were a lot different in the 80s. There was not big corporations. It was usually a comic shop, maybe a local comic shop, or maybe two that, you know, maybe the people were getting along and they would do a small show. And, uh, you know, they just wanted to have a guest. So, yeah, it's a whole different landscape. A lot has changed in 30 plus years. And uh, also, you got to remember uh, comic shows in the 80s. There was no cosplay, so to speak of. Not like it is now. There were no media guests, celebrity guests, all the other stuff that goes in it. It was all about the comics. And those are still the best shows today. And there's only a few of them left. So the smaller shows are usually going to be more comics uh, centric because they don't have the budget to bring in William Shatner. Which, you know, that's just the way it is. Joe, thank you. Adam, thank you. Shannon, thank you. All right, I'm going to end this, so see you next time.